Hi everyone, this is Noelle from Petites. We're here at Casa Verde on a beautiful August day. It's a little warm, uh, but it is that time of year where you're gonna see a lot of these guys. These are perennial hibiscus, also known as rose mallow, also known as marshmallow, believe it or not. Um, what else, swamp rose? I've heard them called all different things, but they're a great perennial plant that you can plant out in your garden full sun typically, so six or more hours of sunlight. They will survive in a partial shade condition, four to six hours of direct sunlight. And um, here they are in their glory. Now, these guys, even though they're in the same family as your tropical hibiscus, and then also your Rosa Sharon, okay, they are very different in the, in the way that they do grow and what they prefer as far as soil conditions are concerned. So they are very heat tolerant. The hibiscus family is wonderful as far as heat tolerance, but the perennial hibiscus really likes moist soil and it can even be on the wet side. So sometimes when you have areas near ponds or your clay soil is not draining, this is a perfect native plant for those types of areas. And we recommend them for rain gardens. So if you're kind of planning a rain garden project, your perennial hibiscus is awesome for that. Um, other than that, they do like, you know, moderately good nutrient soils. They can be on the poorer side as well. They can kind of deal with that. They can t deal with any type of pH, so that's really good too. So they're pretty adaptable, like most natives should be. Um, these guys, what they do is they're considered perennials because they fill out and they grow and they bloom all on that first year or new wood, okay? And then in the fall, they slowly but surely yellow and start to die back. And I tend to cut them back after they yellow out and brown out. I tend to cut them back maybe to about three inches or so out in the garden in late fall. And those three inches of stem or trunk, they are my marker for next spring. Nothing's gonna sprout from those, those pieces of wood, those stems left over. It's gonna be all new growth again. So again, more like a shrubby perennial, but they're really not considered a woody shrub. The other thing that we love about them, of course, are these huge mallow flowers. Your mallows always have five petals. The perennial hibiscus have the largest of the five petals, as you can tell. Um, this is super rose, and it's probably eight to 10 inches across in diameter, uh, flower-wise. And then they always have these really large, what they call a, a staminate column. They're right in the center, so it's like the, the, all the plant's reproductive parts are all right in the center. So it's usually white to um, yellow. And then sometimes they have these beautiful red eyes. Well, you know, anytime you have a deep center, a dark center that's bright red, it's gonna be perfect for the hummingbirds. It's gonna be great for any of your pollinators. And there are a few little bees buzzing around here too. So this is a great family to attract those guys into the garden. One other thing that I should mention with hibiscus, they are always the latest perennial to come out of the ground. They slept forever this year. We had that freeze in May. I think they probably weren't even starting to sprout until we hit June. Um, so just be patient with them. They will come back. They're extremely zone hardy. They're hardy from zone four to nine. So no problems with our cold weather, anything like that. They do really, really well, um, but they just take a while to get started. Once they get started, they kind of develop pretty quickly. Um, but other than that, they're just, they take their time in the beginning of the season. I'm gonna show you a couple different varieties. We have two PW varieties in the front. These are summerific um, hibiscus, perennial hibiscus. The one out in front here is actually very awesome, beautiful sort of dark um, pinky plum to lavender color, beautiful dark foliage, sort of on the bronzy red side. Um, what's great about Berry Awesome is the, obviously the flowers are humongous, 
but that foliage really shows off around other green foliage and also spiky foliage. I love to plant hibiscus with your perennial grasses because the contrast between the textures of the foliage is awesome. I also have this summerific, um, this is perfect storm. And if you look at this, the petals are sort of, I don't know, tie dyed or even maybe, um, you know, just have a blotching of color and it goes from wet red to pink to even some dark red uh, coloring on this one with that dark eye. So those are beautiful too. Again, dark foliage is always appreciated in the garden. Um, this taller one back here, again, I mentioned is Super Rose. Super Rose is going to be um, probably around the five foot mark when she gets grown up full size. Again, very large, medium pink flowers. And I have the dwarf here. This is the Luna series. This is Luna White. And you can tell a little bit smaller flower, but still really, really showy, but nice compact habit right around that um, two and a half to three foot mark range. So um, great bright green foliage, apple green foliage on this one. So there's lots more to choose from with the hibiscus family. Um, I'm gonna tell you they're just a, an easy plant to grow in our area. Great for beginner uh, gardeners and landscapers. And again, can really tolerate some, some clay soil, some heat, um, some problematic areas that we do have in Northeast Ohio. So do try these guys if you're trying to bring the pollinators in. And I should mention they're pretty good as far as deer resistance and bunny resistance too. So that's always a plus for us around here. And um, basically just enjoy. Enjoy.